Hey there, welcome to Sense Seeker. My name is Luke. Today we're going to get back to a little Berlin School stuff. We've been uh, over the over the last couple of years now, actually, we've been talking about various Berlin School techniques. Uh, you know, how to build patterns, how to build instruments, how to apply them, how to combine them all together. Um, and the sort of, uh, sort of recurring message that I've been giving is, you know, keep your figures small, keep the repeating figures small, the clips, you know, your patterns should be, you know, three notes long and then repeat, right? Apply a delay and a reverb to that and, and, and play with that texture. Um, but you can use much longer patterns and that's the topic of today's video. So uh, I want to talk about how to build slightly longer patterns, okay, by treating them like a voice, like having a conversation. Uh, and I also want to talk about having two voices sort of talking to each other, sort of going back and forth to fill in the gaps. And I'm going to show sort of an extreme example of that, a little hyperactive example. Uh, but, um, you know, you can take what we do today and uh, see if you can apply that towards sort of building longer patterns for your Berlin School sequences and uh, thinking in terms of voices or instruments talking to each other. Okay, uh, so let's dig in. So I've got a little synth here. Little horn. Okay, nothing too fancy. I've got my second voices and my counter voice. These two voices are going to talk to each other. Okay, so those are my two voices I'm going to have to talk to each other. I've also got a very simple sort of pad. Now this is a pad that's got a huge washing reverb on it. Okay, and we'll get into what instruments I'm actually using and what effects are being applied to them in a little bit, but let's just talk about timbres. Then I've got this bass. I'm going to not have a rhythm part. There'll be no drums, okay? But I'm going to let the bass be percussive and sort of drive the pattern. So here's the bass. All right. And it's a simple bass loop. You can use anything. Uh, and then I've got a lead sound that's... And so we're going to build from that, but we're going to start with these two voices. Okay. So voice one, what is this? Uh, so I've just pulled a bunch of things out of the, in the box map. I'm completely inside the DAW. These are all soft sense, no hardware today, uh, but this would work with hardware, with software. It doesn't matter. Uh, so we're using a little Juno six, uh, um, little Juno six from Arturia, right? Uh, and this is just you know, Juno 6 sort of brass, uh, it's a filtered sawtooth wave. Um, and really, uh, there's some quarter note delay being applied to it and some reverb. Okay. And it's just the internal within the synth. Okay. Uh, nothing else is being done to that in the chain. I've got a little utility at the end. That's bumping the gain a bit just to get the gain staging up. I could just go turn the volume on the synth up, but I tend to use things just as their defaults. And I like having a utility plugin at the end of my chain for being able to tweak things and get them in a range where then the faders are more useful as opposed to pushing faders up or down. Uh, anyway, so that's our horn sound. Pretty wet, right? High delay, high reverb. Okay, our second voice, sort of in the Arturia box today. All right, so this is uh, their virtual MS-20 Mini. Okay, and these are just presets I pulled out of the box, tweaked very slightly, so this is their car keys preset. I wanted something that was kind of percussive, but would also sustain. And the effects that I'm applying to this little MS-20 sound is uh, built-in Ableton Phaser Flanger. I'm using the Ableton it's basically a Ableton's take on space echo basically. Uh, and again, a little utility plugin at the end. Okay. And I've got, I pushed up the, the pitch and one octave in the MIDI domain, but that's just to make it easier to play on the grid here. All right. So I've got these two sounds. These are my voices. All right. And 
Okay, so they sound timbrely very different from each other. So it's good. So when we've got them playing at the same time and talking to each other, your ear is going to say, oh, voice one is talking and now voice two is talking. And when they start getting pretty woven together, your ear will be able to differentiate easily who's playing what notes. And it sounds interesting to our little ears and our brains, okay? So I'm gonna start playing this one voice. This is the really wet horn voice. Okay, so this is a four bar loop, okay? It's not a simple three note repeating figure. This is a phrase, it's a conversation. It's half of a conversation, right? You could think of this as something you could sing. And in fact, I did. What I did is I hummed into a microphone, recorded it into Ableton, and then converted it over to MIDI. Ableton has a convert audio to melody or convert audio to harmony or convert drums. If you want a beatbox, you can convert drums over into a drum track. So I basically just hummed this. Now the beauty of doing that is even if you can't sing a note, right? <laughs> um, it'll get the rhythm of what you're trying to say, the conversational rhythm into a MIDI clip. And then you just drag the notes around and get it to where you want it to be harmonically. All right. Now that's the first sort of conversational voice. The next one is this other instrument. Right, a distinct sound that sounds completely different. Now, if I show you both of these clips together, right, my first clip is this sort of violet one, and then my second voice is this clip, and it's pretty energetic. There's a lot of notes going on there, right? Now, all of this is in the key of C minor, all right? And I force this by for my clips, going over the clip setting, turning on the scale button and selecting C minor. If you've watched any of the old videos, you know, I advocate when you start working on a piece of music, pick a key, right? Pick a scale you're going to work in and then consistently use that scale against all your clips and things like that. So that's, that's what we've done here, okay? So this is C minor. So all of the notes, because this is currently, the focus is being set to, C, to a scale mode. All the notes on this grid are within C minor. So you can't actually pick anything outside the scale. That's gonna help you keep things around this sort of tonal center, right? You'll be able to say it's all within this key. And it isn't, um, I don't like to say there are wrong notes, but it, what it's gonna do is force the notes that you do select to be harmonically related to each other in a way that's consistent, okay? Um, and you can experiment as you're draw, you literally can paint notes onto your clip. So if we look at our clips individually, we had this one, right? And I. I hummed that in and then converted it to notes, but you could play it on a piano or a grid or whatever you like, or just draw it in. And my second one is this one. Now, one thing I want to point out, what makes this a conversation is these two voices are never talking at the same time. Okay. When this note's playing, the green notes are not. When the green notes are playing, the violet notes are not. And they go back and forth like we do when we talk. We have a conversation. I talk, then you talk, then I talk, then you talk. Now, it doesn't always flow that way with humans, and it doesn't have to flow that way with music, and there's nothing wrong with having them play at the same time. But it's interesting, rhythmically, to have that interaction back and forth, especially when those two voices have a very distinct sound, they sound different from each other, and you can also play around and have them have different reverb speeds, right? So this first voice, as opposed to the second voice, Okay. The first voice has an eighth note delay on it. The second voice has a dotted eighth note delay on it. So the second voice, boom. Right, sounds like the first voice is repeating a little faster, it's because it is a quarter note delay, okay? So what's gonna happen is when these two clips start playing against each other, they have uh, separated whose turn, you know, as the clip plays, one voice speaks and then the other voice speaks, right? But their delays 
are at different rates and their delays are going to smear and overlap and do interesting things rhythmically. Okay. So let me shut up and let you hear this as it goes. Okay. So here, let me make it. So we're just going to hear these two clips. And that's that. Okay. So I don't know if I would call this counterpoint. Someone who's more versed, well versed than me in music theory can probably lead you to understanding what counterpoint is. For me, I call this as alternate voicings, right? Or these voices are talking to each other. All right. So let's bring in a few things. Let's bring in the, the uh, pads. So if we include this now. bring in our bass part and we'll look at them all together all right and that is another form of Berlin school bed We've got what a bass that's basically doing what I would call a drone. It's It's got a rhythm to it. It's driving. The rhythm is driving it forward. But it's just humming around on C. Right? And we've got some chords that are real sparse. That's pad. The important part of that pad is the modulating reverb tail. So we just play two notes on that pad. Then we let off and we let the reverb tail sort of slightly go out of tune over time and it's texturally interesting and then we've got voice one and voice two playing against each other having a conversation never playing at the same time but weaving back and forth and voice one has a quarter note delay applied to it and voice two has a dotted eighth note delay applied to it and so their echoes are sort of weaving together even further so you're building basically a tapestry out of those two instruments. And once you have that tapestry built, you've got the fabric of the piece, you've got a foundation, you've got these pads, you can play on top of it. is not for me to jam today, although that's super fun. Um, what I want you to walk away with is this technique, these two clips, okay? You can have two voices that talk to each other. Leave some space, right? The first voice, the violet voice there, it plays, and then there's leaves a gap. And it plays, it leaves a little gap. It plays, and it's basically having a conversation. Then the second voice, the green voice there, is filling in and having the other side of that conversation. Those are both in the same key. They're both working in C minor, all right? And since none of them are actually playing at the same time, you don't actually have to worry too much about um, tension being added because you've got you know, two notes that are a bit more on the dissonant side, forming a dissonant interval. Now their echoes will do that. And that's, again, interesting to your ear, right? The first voice has a quarter note delay on it. And the second voice has a dotted eighth delay. Uh, but it's something to try, and uh, I hope that's useful for you. All right. So, hey, that's it. A real quick one. I hope this was uh, entertaining and informative. As always, you have been watching Synth Seeker. Have a great weekend.